Gentlemen, once again, we are pleased and gratified to come before you with another Bible analysis. Uh, we appreciate those who desire to better uh, comprehend the greatest book on the face of the earth. It is a book that we actually walk on rather than walk with, and uh, hopefully the time will come where we will uh, make a decision to uh, let the Bible be our guide and let the Lord guide our steps, our Creator guide our steps. We must understand that the Creator, that Jesus, Jesus is the resurrection and the life and that He is the author and the finisher. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He started you off and He will end you up. No matter what you do in between, the Lord is the starter and the Lord is the finisher. Now, he does give you a pathway to travel in the between, but it's your decision uh, to decide whether you will follow his path or your own path, or you follow his path or Satan's path. Those are the two paths you actually have, the Savior's path or Satan's path. Good to be with you again. Get your Bible, get your pencil, get your paper. Got a little feedback, but we'll be okay. Get your Bible, your paper, your pencil, and let us uh, go together in another study. We welcome you at North Shore, people loving to serve people. Remember that on Lord's Day, our, on Sundays, our services begin at 9 a.m. We have devotion. All great people should be ready for Sunday devotion. That's the Lord's Day. That's the Lord's Day. That is his day. That's, that, that's not the best day to just lay in bed when you could be worshiping and fellowshipping uh, with the biblical saints. Uh, Sunday, the resurrection day, uh, when we come together for a complete worship of where we uh, pray and where we sing and where we uh, give and where we commune and where we preach and teach and where we fellowship. Complete worship on the Lord's day. Starts at 9 o'clock. Uh, then uh, our class for all ages begins right around 11.30, and you'll be out right around 12.30 to go your way. And in the middle of the week, we have a class for all ages on Wednesdays, two of them, as a matter of fact, a 9.30 a.m. class. That's the a.m. for those who like to rise early. Then we have the p.m. class at 6.30 p.m. Come out and... Uh, Come and be with us. You're welcome on the campus of North Shore Church of Christ. Well, let's go back to the Word of God for a moment. And we're living in a time in this great country where we're focused on problems at the top of our government. And when I say, well, not so much at the top of our government, actually the top of our government right now, uh, the, uh, the executive branch is running relatively smoothly. Uh, we just have to get together in the House and the Senate. But we're dealing with our former president who has been indicted some four times, and it's a sorrowful scenario that uh, he decides to choose Path that leads him to that. And many people around him have been incarcerated and been under the clutches of the law uh, because they followed him. Jesus once said, and he still says it, let the blind lead the blind, 
and they both fall into the ditch. Uh, we are susceptible to uh, many things if we follow humanity, human beings. Uh, you got to be careful on who you uh, follow. Now, some people sound good, but they don't mean good. Uh, there are those who are very eloquent of speech. It's kind of like in the 19th chapter, 18th chapter of Acts. There was a man who was a polis, who was an eloquent speaker. And he said some things that sounded good to the ears of the people. But he was teaching the baptism of John and not the baptism of Christ. John's baptism was not acceptable in the Christian dispensation. You had to have the baptism of Christ, which remits your sins. John's baptism was a baptism unto repentance. Unto repentance. But Jesus' baptism is unto salvation. In other words, it puts you into, put, the, the, the baptism puts you into his body, which is his church. And anybody who says you don't have to be baptized to be saved, they're saying you don't have to be in the church to be saved. And they're also saying you don't have to be in the body of Christ to be saved. Well, if you got to be in the body of Christ, you got to get into the body of Christ. How do you get into the body of Christ? Well, proper teaching, and then baptism, and then proper living to stay in there. Just thought I would drop that for you. But now our lesson right now, being that we are challenged by a multiplicity of uh, problems, how do we navigate through all of the vicissitudes, the issues of life? And many of them uh, give us pain and frustration and hostility. We get angry at one another. When we are told how to do something better, we get upset because we think we know it all, and uh, pride gets in the way. How, how do we, how do we uh, manage through that kind of uh, rebellious type mentality? Well, there is a word I want to bring to the forefront for just a few moments, shall I be long, and you take your notes and hang with me. Uh, open your Bibles up for just a moment to the book of Proverbs. That's in the Old Testament. Remember what we said. Now, the Bible has the Old Testament, and there is the New Testament. The Old Testament, again, is good, but the New Testament is better. But in the Old Testament, we get a lot of great concepts. We get, get top-notch concepts of the Godhead, some concepts. We, we, we can't be saved by the Old Testament because... It was not geared to save us, but it was geared to bring Christ into the world who is the Savior of the world. He saved the previous world, he saves the present world, and he saves those who will be in the new world, should the world still be here. So the Savior is Jesus. However, in Proverbs, who was written by Solomon, the third king of united Israel, you know, Israel had three kings. There was King Saul, King David, and King Solomon. And when Solomon stepped up to be king, and when the Lord uh, selected him to be king, Solomon asked for one thing, and he asked for the word wisdom. And that was a, that was a wise choice on his part. Now, open your, your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 2. What I want to do together, we'll read just uh, about the first six verses here, uh, verses 1 through 6. And as you see, uh, we do not have it written up here on the board, but our text uh, is Proverbs chapter, write this on your notepads, Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. All right, I'm going to give you time. I hope you got it, and we're going to begin reading together. Here's what Solomon records. Now, Solomon, by the way, is inspired by the Lord. Everything written in the Bible is inspired by the Godhead, by the Holy Spirit. It's inspiration. It is not 
written by perspiration. See, we perspire, but the Lord inspires. He inspires mankind to do things that man could not do without his inspiration. In Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 1, he says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, now that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's an incomplete statement. It ends with a semicolon, okay? So that thou incline thine ear unto what? Wisdom. Now let, let, let's back up a little. If you will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, take in the words of the Lord and hide his commandments within yourself. He said, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, semicolon, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, semicolon, Verse 4, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, semicolon. See, he hasn't, he hasn't ended the sentence yet. Then, that's an adverb of time. When then, after you've done all of that, then shall thou understand the fear, that's respect of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. Watch this now. Now, that's period. Now, once I do all of that, I find the knowledge of God. Okay? Now, verse 6. For the Lord does what? Giveth wisdom. Stop right there for just a moment. You cannot have wisdom without knowledge. Okay? Just, just remember that little key to life. No knowledge, no wisdom. Okay? Now, let, 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 let me take you another step class. Now you can jot these, these thoughts down. Whatever knowledge you receive, that will determine the kind of wisdom you will have. Okay? If you get Worldly knowledge, you will have worldly wisdom, okay? If you have parental knowledge, you will have parental wisdom. If you have gang-banging knowledge, you will have gang-banging wisdom. If you have Republican knowledge, you will have Republican wisdom. If you have Democratic knowledge, you will have Democratic wisdom. If you have Jesus knowledge, you will have Jesus wisdom. All right? So knowledge is the foundation of wisdom. Now, he says in verse 6, for the Lord does what? Giveth wisdom. Wherefrom? Out of his mouth cometh what? Knowledge. There it is. And understanding. See, first you got to get knowledge and understanding and wisdom then can work with you. You don't know nothing, God ain't going to give you no wisdom. Let, let, let me put it in street language. No, if you don't know nothing, then ain't nothing going to happen for you. No wisdom. You, you, know, you know why some people can get blessings and lose them all? Because they don't have the right kind of knowledge, okay? Now, our subject in this class is no heavenly wisdom is our earthly problem. Do you know the problems we have? Now, you can just list all kinds of problems, whatever, whatever they may be. You may have some thorns in the flesh. 
no matter what it is, you might have some thorns in the flesh. Whatever your problem, earthly problem is, it is because you have no heavenly knowledge to get heavenly wisdom. All right? So out of that text now, let, 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 let me define wisdom a little, little more clearer. Wisdom is the capacity to not only understand information, but the application of the information. Let me say that again. Wisdom is the capacity. That's the ability. See, I help, let, let, let me allow me to back off for a moment. The capacity that we have, uh, no matter what it is, the capacity to love, the capacity of peace, the capacity of giving, the capacity of benevolence, the capacity of serving in ministries, whatever capacity we have, okay, uh, that, 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 that capacity is given by the Lord, okay. Uh, if, if, even in athletics, the capacity to play golf, the capacity to play basketball. Some people are better than others. That means their capacity level is different. Tiger Woods grew up with the, the capacity to play the game. MJ had the capacity. LeBron has the, you know, the capacity. Whatever capacity is, Serena Williams, she had the capacity for tennis. Uh, Wilma Rudolph had the capacity for track and field. Capacity. God gives capacity. You, can, you need to find what your capacity is. See, sometimes what happens is we want to work above our capacity or we want to work below our capacity. You need to find out and maximize your capacity. Okay? So now let, let's, let's define wisdom now. Again, capacity to not only understand information. That's why some, sometimes in school, you know, some, some people just can't, can't get it, can't understand. In, in, say, say you're sitting in a chemistry class or you're sitting in a government class or you're sitting in a, in a, in a, in a, in a um, calculus class or an algebra class or an English class or a geography class, or whatever the class, Spanish class, German class, whatever it might be. Some people just don't have the capacity uh, to understand the information. Now, let's go back again. What is wisdom? The capacity to not only understand information, but the application of the information. So in other words, wisdom is the capacity to apply that which we have received in terms of information. All right? That's why in order to have faith, the Bible says that faith does what? It cometh by hearing all right so what's happening when you have when you're trying to obtain faith the one faith that the that, that the lord jesus provides that god provides that the holy spirit communicates when you're trying to get that one faith all right you need to faith cometh by hearing what do i need to hear do i need to hear satan talk do i need to hear my friend talk do I need to hear my, my, my people in the street talk? Do I need to hear my dogs talk? Do I need to, you know, what, what, what do I need to hear talk? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when I hear the word of God, that sets up faith, all right? So then as, as, as faith begins to grow, then the Lord can begin to bring, bring wisdom into what I've heard. When I get that information and I start understanding the information, see, a lot of people, a lot of people don't understand, they, they don't, first of all, they don't read so that they can understand. I'm, I'm finding out that a lot of people don't want to hear, listen to certain information. That way, they feel that gives them an excuse for not doing the application. If I don't hear what you're saying, then I don't have to do what you're saying, you know. In other words, we also play the dumb game. Sometimes we play the dumb game. But you know, let me tell you something. You, you can trick me. But tricking me is no, no big deal. You just cannot trick 
the Lord. The Lord knows the game that we all play, okay? So now, in terms of, 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 of wisdom, wisdom is the application of information. So that's why we have to watch where we get our information. Let me, let, let, let's, let's get a passage of Scripture right now. Let's swing over to the New Testament in Acts chapter 7. The seventh chapter of the book of Acts. All right, the seventh chapter of the book of Acts, and just, 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 just one verse uh, there. Uh, let's see, verse 22. Now watch this. Here's the, here's the beauty of, uh, as, as we look, you know, I, I've, I've made the statement that the Old Testament is good, but the New Testament is better. The Old Testament had faults, as a Hebrew writer says, but the New Testament was complete and perfect. Okay? Now, sometimes in the New Testament, uh, things that are written in the Old Testament are restated in the New Testament. You got that? L let me give you an example of just one, just one, show you something. You remember... Uh, uh, a few days ago, I did a lesson on the, I, I gave you some information because we had gotten some flyers, some handouts on the Seventh Day Adventist. Okay, we had gotten some flyers, and I wanted to share with you something about those flyers, and I, I, and I think we, we were able to uh, give you some information that was helpful to you. But in the Old Testament, it says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Okay, that's one of the Ten Commandments. That's what, what we call the Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. But when you go to the New Testament, that particular one is not repeated. It is not restated that we are to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. It's not, it's not repeated. But all, the, other, the other nine, they are restated. Now, for instance, let me give you an example. It says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That's in the Old Testament. It's also in the New Testament. It's restated. You got, you got me now? Some of the concepts and information in the old is restated in the new. The Old Testament was strictly to get Christ into the world. And some of those principles Christ restated. Now let, let me give you another one that's a real glaring one. A real glaring one. An Old Testament concept. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love thy neighbor as thyself. That's an Old Testament concept. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Christ comes along, and what does Christ say? Christ says, a new commandment I give unto you. Now, what, what, what's Christ doing? Giving you a better commandment than what was in the Old Testament. The Old Testament said, love thy neighbor as thyself. The New Testament says now, love one another as I, that's Jesus, Jesus talking in red letters, Love one another as I have loved you. That's the new, the new commandment is what? Love one another, how? As Christ loves me. That's how I'm to love you. The same way Christ loves me, that's how I'm to love you. That's why racism cannot exist in anywhere in this world, and certainly not in the so-called Christian United States of America. Anybody that's a racist and white supremacist, they are not a New Testament Christian. Let that be said across the world. It, they are not a New Testament Christian if they believe in white supremacy. And if anybody believes in black supremacy, they are not a New Testament Christian. Jesus says, Jesus says the new commandment is this, that you love one another as I have loved you. All right? And you know what? Jesus dealt with all kinds of people. He dealt with Jews. He dealt with Gentiles. He dealt with Samaritans. He dealt with them all, okay. He dealt with, he even dealt with a black man. You remember Simon the Cyrene who helped Jesus to carry his cross? Oh, this past Sunday, Brother Griffin brought a great message on the Ethiopian eunuch. That was a black man traveling from Ethiopia because he wanted to worship in Jerusalem. Why did he come to Jerusalem? He had heard about the monotheistic God. And so by going to Jerusalem, he was able to learn something about the monotheistic God because in Ethiopia, they had a multiplicity of gods. And then, of course, he ran into Philip, and Philip said, uh, uh, and he said to Philip, see, here's water. What did hinder me to be baptized after Philip had preached unto him Jesus? And, of course, he was baptized and went on his way rejoicing and set up the church of Christ in Ethiopia. Lord, have mercy. Okay? All right, now... <clears throat> 
Uh, there is a vast difference between godly wisdom and worldly wisdom. Now you notice in our topic, we're talking about no heavenly wisdom is our earthly problem. See, the problem is we got, we got, we got a lot of information. We're just loaded with information. Everybody is running around with a cell phone. You don't even have to have an encyclopedia anymore. All you got to do is just Google it. Just Google whatever you want to know, and, and you, you'll get some kind of answer, okay? And, and, and so we, we have a whole lot of, we have much, much, much earthly wisdom, okay? But we don't have enough heavenly wisdom. We have earthly information, and consequently we have a whole lot of earthly wisdom, all right? So there's a vast difference between uh, heavenly wisdom or godly wisdom and earthly wisdom. Wisdom, by the way, is an attribute of God. God is synonymous with wisdom. Christ is synonymous with wisdom. All right? In Romans chapter 11. Now, you're in the book of Acts right now. I just had you to turn to the book of Acts. Okay, go to the next book in the New Testament. Just go, let's run right over to Romans, okay? Romans and chapter 11. Romans chapter 11 and verse number 33, okay? Uh, the 11th chapter of, now this is the Apostle Paul, by the way. Paul is inspired by Jesus. And everything he writes he gets the information from Jesus. All right? Now, in verse 33, here's what Paul writes to the Church of Christ at Rome. You know, you know he, ends Rome, he ends this book by saying, salute you one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. See, there were, there were many congregations of churches of Christ set up in Asia Minor and so forth uh, during the first century. In fact, that's all you had. The only church you had was the Church of Christ. You didn't have any other church at the time that Paul wrote this. There was, there was no Baptist, no Methodist, no Catholic, no, 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 no Seventh-day Adventist, no Jehovah's Witness, no nothing at this time, only the Church of Christ, okay? As a matter of fact, in verse 33, he says, Romans 11, verse 33, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Paul is, you know, it ends with an exclamation point. Paul is exclaiming, you know, this is, you know, just think, think, ladies and gentlemen, think about the depth, the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge that God has. Think how deep, how great, how massive it is. Think about, think about this for a moment. Think about, let, 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 let me give you a, a, an example that's going on right now. In Hawaii, in the great beautiful state, the pineapple state of Hawaii, where you have the hula girls, <laughs> all right, just, okay. The great state of Hawaii, the island of Maui, has had a severe burn down, okay? A severe burn down. People have been burned up. Animals have been destroyed. But let me, let me, let me tell you about the wisdom of God. Now, you watch. You go back and you check Maui in about five years. And the, the sign of the, this, this severe burning will have disappeared. That's the wisdom of God. See, sometimes God causes nature to act in an unexpected way to us in order to rekindle itself and regenerate itself and even to regenerate us because we get messy, and sometimes the Lord has to mess with us in order to get us to clean up, okay? Sometimes he has to start the cleanup process to get us to want to clean up our lives, our behavior, and our relationship. So back in verse 33 now. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Then, then look how he closes out. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. In other words, if you go to, you try to Google, find out how smart God is and what God's IQ is, 
you, 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 can't even, you can't even find what his IQ is. God, see, God is the creator of IQ, <laughs> your intelligent quotient. God's intelligence, is, we cannot conceive or even imagine that, okay? Now, also, when we're dealing with wisdom, wisdom is a possession of Jesus, okay? It's a possession, it's an attribute of God it's a possession of Jesus. All right? Let, let's, let's, let's look at Matthew right quick. Go to the, that's the first book in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 13. Are you all right with me, Christ? You good? You good? Okay. Matthew chapter 13. And let's see, verse 54. In verse 54. Jesus is good for his parables of his kingdom. His kingdom is the church, and the church is the kingdom. Uh, what is the kingdom? He's king of kings, and his domain, part of his domain is the church. He's king over the church, and lord over the church. That's why the church wears his name and no other earthly name should be on the church. Period. It's his body. We, you know, you can't change my name. My name is what my name is, okay? You know, you, you can try to, but you know, you can't, you can't do that, okay? Uh, now, in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 54, in fact, let, let, let's just read verses 53 and 54 together so we got a better handle on the context. And it came to pass. I, I like that, that phrase right there. And it came to pass. You know, there's another phrase in the Bible. Uh, wow, this is Bible class. So every now and then I might veer off in, the, the, just to help you out. There's another phrase similar to that where it says, this too shall pass. For instance, this racism we have, this too shall pass. The, 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 this trying to, to destroy democracy, this too shall pass. Uh, the, the fires in Maui, this too shall pass. The heat dome that's in parts of our country, this too shall pass. Be careful now. The heat dome may leave, but a cold dome may come, all right? You know, a cold polar, a polar thing might come down from the north, okay? So you got to be aware of that. The, 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 this too shall pass. But then it says in verse 53, and it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, now let me explain this to you. His own country is Nazareth, okay? That's where he grew up, was in Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem. He grew up in the city of Nazareth. So now he decides to run home for a little bit, all right? So he comes into his own country. He taught them, that's the information, he taught them in their synagogue. Notice, it, you know, he didn't say my Synagogue. You got, you got to watch those words right there. Now, is, you, is Jesus a Jew? Yes, he is. But notice what he said. In their synagogue. You know why he said their synagogue? Because it's not his. All right? It's not his. Okay. Now, I will say this to you, that God set up the temple in the Old Testament. Jesus set up the church in the New Testament. But now he says he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they no, no, notice that, that 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 they and there okay there and they you know that, that, that you got you got to watch those those antecedents okay uh, so so it says now uh, in so much that they were astonished and said whence has this man now look, look what they're trying to do they're trying to make Jesus like he is a generic kind of guy this man. Now, 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 they know good and well that this man is not just any man. This man is a special man. This man is an incarnate man. This man is a man from heaven. This man is the savior of the world. This man is the Messiah that they believe has not come. And still many of them don't even believe he's come today. This man. Now watch this. He says when when, uh, whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? 
All right? Now, what does that, what does that tell you? Jesus possesses wisdom. God, wisdom is an attribute. Jesus, it is a possession. Write that down. Write that down on your notes now. The attribute of God is wisdom. He's got all of it. Jesus possesses wisdom. Now, what does that tell you? Uh, if I need some money, Brother Sims, who was our, uh, he's our senior media professional. Now, he's sitting in a chair. Now, if I want some money, I don't go and talk to the chair because the chair doesn't have any money. But I, I'll talk. The chair has wisdom. The chair, there's an attribute of the chair that's wise because when he sits in the chair, it'll hold him up. Okay, it'll hold him up. But if I want some money, I got to go to Andre. Because he possesses the money. Whoever possesses wisdom, that's where I go. If I want some money, I go to Andre. I'm not going to go to his chair. I go to him. And, and, and I go to him and get that $100, okay? Because he possesses the money. The chair does not possess it, all right? If I want wisdom, if I want wisdom, okay, I don't go to the world to get wisdom. I don't go to, to, to a secular school to get wisdom. I go to Jesus to get my wisdom because he possesses wisdom. Everybody with me? Now, I, now and God has that attribute, but Jesus, but now, watch this now, watch this now. God gave wisdom to Christ. He possesses wisdom, and that's where I go to get it, okay? Now, to receive wisdom, all right, let's, let's see, let's, let's see, now let's see what the New Testament can help me out with that. You, now swing back with me to the book of James right quick, James. James chapter 1. All right, I'm going to give you time to flip back there right quick. James chapter 1, okay. And let's see uh, about the reception or receiving wisdom. Uh, I think what we'll do, we'll just get verses 5 and 6. Verses 5 and 6. Let's, let's read that together, okay? All right. Ready, class? Write that verse down, too, but these verses down. James, now first of all, let, let, let's find out who James is. In, in verse 1, it says that James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now that word servant means that he's, a, he's actually a slave. In other words, it's, it's not like slavery here in the United States. Let me tell you something. The slavery that existed in the United States has not existed anywhere else in the world. The slavery that was in the United States. Well, well South Africa. But uh, the, sa the slavery we had here in the United States was, was terrible. It was terrible. And we have one guy running around, running for president of this great nation, talking about that slavery had some benefits. And I, I, I'm trying myself to figure out what the benefit is. What was the benefit of my great-grandparents having to go through slavery and sharecropping and not being adequately compensated for their labor in this blessed country, picking all that cotton and the foundation of this nation? What kind of benefit was given the people that are of Afro-American descent, Afro-African descent. What kind of, what kind of benefit did, did, did they get? You, you, you know, he ought to be ashamed of, they should run him out of, out, they need to run him out of Florida. Goodness, good. what kind of benefit can one get? Okay, now watch this in verse 1. James, James in verse 1, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greeting and then he goes into verse number two my brother count it all joy when you fall into different kind, diverse temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience verse four but let patience have her perfect work 
that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. But now let's go to verse number 5. Now that's what I want now, verses 5 and 6, and we'll be done reading here. He says, If any of you lack wisdom, I, 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 I'm, go, I'm going to make a suggestion here. I'm, a, I'm, on a, I'm going to make an assumption. Well, I, I'm just going to say this. Every last one of you that hear me right now, you lack wisdom. You lack, you have a need for wisdom. I have a need. We all have a need. Okay? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. In other words, when God gives you something, he doesn't get into the, he doesn't take it back. You know, there's a, there's a saying we used to use, you know, like being an Indian. I don't know why they use Indians, an Indian giver. Uh, that, that, that's really like a, being a Reagan giver. You know, Reagan uh, promised us that uh, if, if you let all the money flow to the rich, to the, to the, to the men at the top, to the white men, that they would, they would let it trickle down. It never did trickle down. Reagan has passed on. He's dead. And I'm still waiting on the trickle to come. It never did trickle down, see. So, but, but when the Lord owns something, he gives it to us full force when we have his information. So it said, let, let's read verse 5. Now, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall, it shall, it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, all right? In faith. Now, here, that, here's a question now. When I ask for wisdom, I got to ask in faith. Now, how do I get the faith? I got to get some information. What does Romans say? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? The Word of God. What is the Word? Christ is the Word. The Word, the word was in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So Christ is the Word. I got to go to Jesus. Jesus possesses the Word and wisdom. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Don't be wavering, you know. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. All right. Now, let's go into the final phase of this lesson. Let's talk a little, a moment or two about earthly wisdom. Now, since we happen to be in the, I'm going to make this, this is going to be really easy for you. We, we're already in the book of James, right? So you don't have to go far. Just turn over to chapter 3 in the book of James, okay? Chapter 3. Okay, just, just, just flip right over to chapter 3 and just hang there for a moment. Okay. Notice what I said up here on the subject. No heavenly wisdom is our earthly problem. Okay? That's our earthly problem. We got a lot of wisdom, but not, earth, not heavenly wisdom. All right? Let's take a look at earthly wisdom. Okay? Now, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Let's let the great book tell you. James. James, who is inspired by Jesus, will tell us what earthly wisdom is. All right, look at uh, chapter 3 and uh, verse 13. It says, who is a wise man, in verse 13, and endued with knowledge among you? So right off the bat, he's asking the question. You got to have some, see, you know, let, let me help you again. You got to have knowledge in order to get wisdom. Okay? If you don't have any knowledge, you can't get wisdom. But when you get knowledge, then the application of the knowledge brings on the wisdom via the Lord. Okay. Then he says, Who is a wise man and do with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of what? Of wisdom. Let him show it. Let, 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 let's see something. Let's see something. Let's see if, now you, got, you, now you do a lot of talking. You, there's a lot of people do a lot of talking. All right, but then let, 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 let's see your action. Let, let's see if you can make it happen, okay? It's one, thing, it's one thing to say you're a mechanic. Let's see you fix my broken down car. 
It's one thing to say that you're a cook. Let, let, let me see you barbecue. Uh, uh, you know, do, 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 do a little barbecue. Uh, cook some turnip green. Let, you, 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 you do a lot of talking. Well, let, let's see. Hey, you're, you're, you're a good uh, bowler. Uh, let, let, let me see you roll the ball down the lane. Okay? All right? So look at, look at verse number 14. But, now watch this now. Go very close. If you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, Glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is what? Earthly, sensual, and devilish. Let's read one more verse. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Now, let, 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 let me take a moment. Let's, let's describe earthly wisdom. Notice, it didn't just say envy, but it said bitter envy. You know what's happening in our country right now? We got racial envy going on. We see somebody else doing well, we don't just have envy, we have bitter envy. Why, why do you think a lot of people got all these guns? They got all these guns. Because they think somebody's going to take their job, take their position, take their material stuff. And you know, you know who's going to take it? Let us think for a moment. Everything you have, you know who's going to end up taking it? The Lord. The Lord's going to get it all back. When you go to the cemetery, I, I notice that you never take all that stuff with you to the cemetery. You don't take your 401k with you to the cemetery. You, 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 don't, take your, you, know, you, know, you don't take your Rolls Royce. To, you don't drive it to the cemetery. You don't, you don't drive your new house to the cemetery. You don't, you don't drive your, 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 your Armani uh, your suits and, uh, and your, your, your hats and all that to the cemetery. Okay? The Lord takes it all back. Okay? All right. Bitter envy is a description of earthly wisdom. Okay? Let me give you another one. Jealousy. Jealousy is at a description. How about another one? Self-ambition. Uh, you know, self-ambition. How about contention from Satan, from evil? See, sometimes we are contentious because we're just playing old evil. Evil, okay? Let, 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 me, let me write something up here for you. Let, let, me, let me put, allow me to put the word self. Self. All right? Now, let, let me show you what earthly wisdom is like. First of all, it's self-pride. Self-pride. And when you have self-pride, you do not have humility. You think you're big and bad above the law. We got a man right now that's, that, that's, that's had four indictments. He thinks he's above the law. All right? Going to steal my vote and your vote so he can win. That's what you call self-pride. That's earthly wisdom. That's one of our problems. Self-pride. Let me give you another one. Self-seeking. Same thing as self-ambition. In other words, long as it's for me, we can be having a fellowship dinner, you know, and, and you know, I, I, I got to, you know, I got to get me two or three take-home plates. Self-seeking. Don't worry about somebody else. Just self-seeking. We're self-seeking as a nation. Think about others. The immigrants that are trying to get into this country, you don't put up barbed wire fences and killing people that are trying to come to a free nation and come to a blessed nation. That's self-seeking. You want to protect what you have and hurt somebody else. Let the people come in. Self-seeking. All right, let me give you another one. 
close to seeking, but it's self-serving. Well, I ain't got time for you, but I serve myself. Well, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a real good question. When you get sick, who's going to serve you? Are you going to serve yourself when you're sick? You're going to serve yourself when you're broke? You're going to serve yourself when you got, when you got to get your car fixed and you can't fix it? Are you going to serve yourself when, you, when your children act up? You're going to serve yourself? And you don't know how to fix your children? Self-serving. All right? Now, let me give you a final one. Let me give you a final one. Self-indulgent. I indulge in what pleases me, what satisfies me, okay? And this is, all of this kind of in, encapsulates earthly wisdom. By the way, listen to me, class, very closely. This lifestyle is not Christian. Let me say it again. Let me say it, let me say it better. This lifestyle is not New Testament Christianity. To be self-pride, self-seeking, self-serving, and self-indulgent, this is not New Testament Christianity. All right? Now you understand what earthly wisdom is like, okay? Now, let's reverse it. And let's see what heavenly wisdom is like. All right? Heavenly wisdom. Let me put it right up here. That does, I just put the word wisdom. And uh, to, to, so I don't have to work the right the word heavenly. Let me just put Jesus. Since Jesus possesses it. Jesus wisdom. Okay? All right? Let's see what Jesus wisdom is like. First of all, Jesus' wisdom is pure. That means it's not polluted. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 8, Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart. All right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed pure purity, not polluted. Okay? That's heavenly wisdom. All right, let me give you another quality of heavenly wisdom. Heavenly wisdom is peaceable. Peaceable. What did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 9? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. All right. Let me give you another one of heavenly wisdom. Heavenly wisdom is gentle. Gentle. You all know the prosecutor down there in Georgia that indicted the former president. The former president has been calling her all kinds of names, the N-word, and threatening her family. Got all of her, got all of his henchmen calling in and trying to uh, upset her and disturb her sta the staff down there and just mess, just trying to mess up because he's in trouble. Okay. But you see, when you have heavenly wisdom, you're gentle. Let, 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 me, let, let me spend a little time on gentle, so, so you, in case you might miss it. See, when you're gentle, first of all, quietness. You're quiet. You're quiet. You don't run your mouth unnecessarily unless you're saying something of substance. Uh, let, let, let me give you another one. Calmness. Calmness. Even under pressure, you're calm. Calmness. Uh, let, let me give you another one. Let me give you another one. How about kindness? Kindness. When you're gentle, you're kind. Uh, turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. All right. Now keep your, keep your finger, stay, keep over in James. Well, let's just go to Matthew chapter 5. Go back to the first book in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 5. And let's see here. Matthew chapter 5 and verses, uh, let's see, 
You remember Jesus did his sermon on the mount, okay? The most powerful sermon that was ever preached. Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. But in Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12, let me give you another quality of being gentle. All right, in fact, I'm going to write this. I'm going to write this down here as a, as a fourth one. Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Okay? Now watch what Jesus says in his Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, persecute you, say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Verse 12, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. He's letting you know you're not the only one that's going to go through that. But, it, but, but, but I have a reward for you. That's another component of heavenly wisdom. All right? Now stay right there in Matthew chapter 5. Let me give you something else about heavenly wisdom. You are willing, willing to yield. In other words, sometimes you got to give in to the other person. You know, it's not all about, you know, it's, you know it is, well, that's my song book. That's my hat. That's my, you know, that's my, you know, that's my chicken. That's my pie. That's my, my, my. Be willing to yield. Be willing to yield. Look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 3. In the Sermon on the Mount, in verse number 3, Matthew 5 and verse 3. What did, what did Jesus say? Blessed are the poor in spirit. In other words, that's the ones, that, that doesn't mean you don't have no money. That means your spirit is not high-minded. Your spirit is not prideful. But you have an humble spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He could say, blessed are the humble in spirit. Okay. All right? So, that means you're willing to yield. In other words, you're not stubborn. Some people are just plain old stubborn because of pride. Hard-headed, okay? Hard-hearted and hard-headed. All right? All right, let me, give you another, let me give you another one now. The heavenly wisdom, you are full of mercy. Lord, have mercy. Full of mercy. This is, this is one thing that God the Father back in the Old Testament didn't show a, a lot of mercy. When Adam and Eve sinned, he evicted them right out of the garden. He just kicked them right out of the garden. You know, every now and then you get a thorn in the flesh that might stick you. The Lord just kicked them right out of the garden. All right, but now when you act up in the church, Jesus doesn't kick you out of the church. You know what Jesus does? Uh, in Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 7, what does he say? What does he say in verse 7, class? You got it? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. See, you don't, you, you, you don't, you don't, you don't, read, you don't read that in the Old Testament. But Jesus said I, you know, I, I provide mercy, 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 okay? All right? L what, what else about hev heavenly wisdom? Ah, uh, it has good fruit. Good fruits are derived from heavenly wisdom. That means good deeds, good deeds, good deeds. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 6, Jesus said, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Good fruits. Good fruits from Jesus, and then you as, with that heavenly wisdom, produce good fruits. Let me give you another one. Let me give you another one. Let me, let me, let me, let me give you another one while, while we're here. No partiality no partiality 
In other words, you're not partial. You're not racially, you know, insensitive. You know, well, that's, that's blood. That's my family. You know, partiality. The Lord is not partial. He, Christians are not partial without partiality. Well, I might as well give you one last one. No, no hypocrisy. You know, no, none of this pretending to be what you're not, acting like you're what you're not. Let, let, let's, let's get our last passage of Scripture before we wrap up this particular lesson. Let's go back to 1 Peter right quick. Let's see what Peter had to say in 1 Peter Ah, uh, let's see, chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, and verse number 2. Yeah, 1 Peter 2, and verse, let's, let's go verses 1 and 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, I'm going to give you time to get over there. That's, that's near the end of the New Testament, the better covenant. The best covenant. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Verse 1 and 2. All right, verse 1 says, Wherefore, Peter says, this is Peter. This is a, Peter who was a curser, a liar, a denier, a, a knife-wailing, cut-off ear people, a man who made promises and didn't keep them. This is Peter talking now. Let's look, look how he's talking now. Wherefore, Laying aside, lay it aside, all what? Malice, all guile, and what? Hypocrisies, and what? Envies, and what? Evil speakings. Verse 2, as newborn babes. See, a newborn baby is not born with guile, you know, bad language, hypocrisy, pretending to be what it's not. You know, a baby just a baby don't pretend at all. A baby when the baby says, I'm wet, a baby just starts crying. I'm wet, I'm wet, I'm wet. They don't they don't play, you know, I'm dry, you don't have to do anything. No, 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 no. They, they don't, they're not, they're not hypocrite. When they when they're hungry, they'll tell you, I'm hungry. They'll cry right in the middle of the church when they want that milk. I want milk, I want milk, I want milk. Okay? I want to play, I want to play, I want to crawl, I want to crawl, I want to crawl. They're not hypocritical like we are as adults. Envies and evil speaking. As newborn babes desire what? The sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. All right? Let's close out like this here. Let's close out like this here. Let me, uh, let, let, let me give you the foundation of wisdom. I'm going to try to work that in right over here. The foundation of wisdom. <clears throat> I'll write the word wisdom right here. Okay. I'm going to give you the foundation of wisdom. Okay. All right, class, you wanna, might want to jot this down. The foundation of wisdom, first of all, we started out talking about information, didn't we? Information. How you get information? You got to hear the word. All right. So let's put it right there, the Word, okay? When I say the Word, I'm talking about the Biblos, the Bible, the Word, the Word. I'm not talking about the encyclopedia. I'm not talking about the concordance. I'm not talking about what somebody said in, in 1846. I'm not talking about the Constitution of the United States. I'm not, you know, I'm not talking about any of that. I'm not talking about, you know, the Gettysburg Address. I'm talking about the Bible, the Word, okay? All right, what's next? You need, all right, the foundation of wisdom is the indwelling, indwelling of the Holy Spirit. When you get the Word in you, the Holy Spirit comes in you. Holy Spirit, the, the carrier of the Holy Spirit is the Word of Jesus. It travels on the Word. No Word, no Holy Spirit. Now, if you get Satan's Word, you know what you got? You got hell's Spirit. All right? Satan's spirit, hell's spirit. Jesus' word, he heavenly word, gives me Holy Spirit indwelling. Okay? All right. 
What else? Now, uh, wisdom is sacred. See, it's sacred. When one is wise, you make good decisions, and it's sacred. Number one, you make good decisions for your children while they're young. You train them while they're young. You don't wait till they get old and then you try to beat them into submission. Okay, it's too late then, too late then. All right? Wisdom is sacred. Sacred to bring your children to class, Sunday school, Bible class, worship service, uh, prayer meetings, uh, things that are wholesome in, in, in society, serving the community. It's sacred. All right? Wisdom is sacred. What else? Wisdom has a divine source. I told you a moment ago, who possesses wisdom? Jesus. So the source is divine. It's not earthly. It, the source of this heavenly wisdom is divine. Okay? And then another foundation of wisdom is that there is one Lord. One faith and one baptism. I'll just abbreviate that. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Every now and then somebody will say, well, you know, I've already been baptized. Well, let me tell you something. Maybe you just got wet. See, if you're taught wrong, then you don't have the one baptism. You got to get the one righteous baptism. That means you got to have the right teaching. The right teaching is you got to hear the word, believe the word, repent by the word, because of the word, confess that the word comes from Jesus, and then be baptized because the word says that baptism remits your sin. When you're baptized based upon that particular teaching, you come out of the water of grave of baptism, the Lord adds you to the church of Christ. All right? And then finally, something else about the foundation of wisdom. Wisdom, I'm just going to put up here the word miracle, but wisdom is miraculous. It's miraculous. There are things that happen in your life that you never intended to happen. Let me give you a personal one. Up until I was 28 years old, I was saying that I was not going to be a minister. That's what I said. I was saying that I was going to be a church worker, and I was saying that I was going to be a businessman. But you know what happened? I ended up being a minister. Wisdom is miraculous. It'll send us on a path that we never intended to go. May God bless you. I love you so much, class. Hopefully, this lesson will be powerful for you. And if you have any questions, give us a call at 847-623-9727. Let us have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for everything that you've done for us. We're thankful for time. We're thankful for health. We're thankful for education. We're thankful for information. We're thankful for the wisdom that you give to us when we get information from you. Help us to apply the information so that wisdom can work on our behalf. Forgive us for our sins. Help us to go where we can uh, get better knowledge and better learning. Help us to be better people. Help us to be a better nation and learn to love one another instead of being divided and hostile to one another. These blessings we ask in the name of Jesus who possesses wisdom. Amen, amen, amen. Mm -hmm.